Hallelujah. Crossroads. There's a reason why where you are, where you are, you made a decision at some point in your life. Hallelujah. You made a decision to move here in Canada. You made a decision to marry the beautiful lady you married. You made a decision, amen, uh, to, to take the job that you took. You made a decision to have children, amen. But sometimes just things just happen. And uh, as God was speaking to me to talk about my journey, it's not, I can't do it in a, one service. I think I can take a whole lifetime to talk about my Christian walk with Jesus. But today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just speak the few minutes that I have, and I know that God will bless people. Amen? The Bible says in Romans, no, sorry about that. Yes, it's in Romans 10, 20. And later Isaiah spoke boldly for God saying, I was found by people who were not looking for me. I showed myself to those who were not asking for me. Every time when I look at the journey of my life, this Bible verse, I feel like it's just for me. I was found by people who were not looking for me. I, was, I showed myself to those who were not asking for me. And I feel like that's me. I wasn't searching for God, but he showed himself to me. I wasn't looking for him, but he revealed himself to me. And this is just amazing grace. Maybe one of you, you are like me, where you are doing your own thing in sin and rebellion. And God, out of his mercy and grace, he came and showed up at a point of your need. And he revealed himself to you. I don't know. Is there anybody in this house who was found who found God when they were not looking for him. I found God when I was not looking for him. Jada's mom is so good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Anybody here that God revealed himself when you were not asking for him. You see the children of Israel, they knew their God. But us as, as, as heathens, we were not looking for him. But God shows in his mercy and in his grace to show himself strong. And that's the story of my life. At 21 year old, I moved here in Calgary. And uh, because I was following some guy. Some guy I just had met not even a year. And uh, we were connecting through the phone. But I decided against my family you know, wishes against my friends' counsel, don't go. You don't know this guy. But there was, and yes, I didn't know him. And I thank God for mercy and grace. And I, 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 don't, I don't counsel young people to just follow some guy you, you really don't know. Amen? But there was something deep inside of me, and I couldn't explain. And because me, I'm somebody who, who's really rational in my thinking. And every time I make a decision, I think it through. I don't make a decision just like that. That's not how God has made me. And, uh, but for some reason, following this guy, we can call it love. We can call it destiny. We can call it God just drawing me to this city. I just followed him. Even my parents said, what are you going? I say, I don't know, but I feel like I need to, do, to go. And because he was an, a, neck, a Muslim at that point, it was even very, um, very tricky. But yet I came. I came. And I met him because when I met him in 1997, he had just finished a university. He had just got a job two days after to come to Alberta as an engineer to work. So I met him the Friday when Sunday he was moving. So you see, it was such a short time. But I guess I was hooked. Hooked by his looks, hooked by his brain. Just hooked, amen. Hallelujah. Hooked. And I just arrived in Canada in 1996, so it's not like I knew better. I didn't know better, amen? And I was hooked, and I decided to come. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Follow the dream. <laughs> praise the Lord, amen? So I moved here, and when I moved here, 
we lived together in sin because he was a backslidden boy. I mean, you know. And when apostle is in sin, he's really in sin. When he's for God, he's, he's really for God. He cannot go both ways. He doesn't know how to do middle. Amen. And uh, three months after, imagine just I moved here in this, in this city. Three months after he meets uh, Forbes. Forbes is fresh off the boat immigrants. That's how we call them Forbes in this new, new, <laughs> new age. Forbes, fresh off the boat. It was this immigrant. <laughs> the young people know what, <laughs> what that means. It's us immigrants. When we just arrive in Canada, they call us Forbes, fresh off the boat. Amen. <laughs> Some people are just getting it now. Anyway, so we met this fresh off the boat young man. And his name was Alois. And he was on fire for Jesus, which is Melchior's brother. Where is Melchior and Melchior is not here. Melchior and uh, brother, he came and then we just happened to give him a ride. Just a ride. We found him downtown. He was around this guy who just arrived. You know, I'm Burundian. Of course, we connect easily. Especially in 1996, there's not many people from East Africa. So we just give him a ride. And as we are driving this fresh off the boats on fire preacher from Kenya, start preaching the gospel. <laughs> And, uh, and then start preaching the gospel to my husband. And, and my husband start, no, no, tell him, no, 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 that's not what the Bible says. Let me tell you what the Bible says. And this man of mine started becoming a preacher. Somebody I didn't know, amen. Because at one point, I met him when he was backslidden. So I didn't know anything about his Christian work before. So he started discussing the Bible with this new preacher from Kenya. You know, when Kenya on fire, they're on fire. Amen. And after a day or two, my, my, my boyfriend then, he turned into something else. He came back to Jesus. So just like that. And then it was, it was a shock for me because I was like, what just happened? What did this man just happen? And for so long, I resented this preacher from Kenya. Because I said, you know, he came to destroy my life. So they became best buddies. So imagine two preachers, my husband in his early, late 30s, and this fresh off the boat immigrant. They talk about preaching, how they're going to change the world. And I'm sitting there. I feel like heaven just fell on me. Maybe hell. Hell just fell on me. And down here I am, I'm stuck because he's coming to God fully. I mean, when I say fully, fully. And I'm here, a young girl of 21 year old. I have to make a decision. Say crossroad. Crossroad. I have to make a decision. I have to make a decision. What am I going to do now? And in my heart, God, I don't want to follow you. I'm a Catholic girl. I know what you're all about. I don't want to follow you. And this guy is just on fire for Jesus. He actually looks at me. He has mercy. He doesn't know what to do with me. And I started on a journey where I started talking to God because there was nobody I could talk to. Because I couldn't talk to my family back in Montreal. They would say, we told you so. I didn't have friends here in Calgary. I just arrived. So I find myself talking to this God that I despised. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Amos 3.3, 3, can two walk together except they agreed, except they come for an appointment. That was the time of a crossroad for my life where I had to decide, what are you going to do now? See, I just came from Africa. It's not like I know anything about Canada that I can take the chance to go find a job. I didn't even know English, let alone, and try to start my life. I'm stuck. Amen. I'm stuck. I wasn't stuck. It was an opportunity for God to meet me. And that was a day of an appointment for me. It was a crossroad of my life. And I started speaking with this God that I didn't know. Hallelujah. I knew the God of Catholicism, but I talked to him. I said, God, I'm stuck. Why did you let me come to this city? You're pushing me in a position where I, I have to make a decision. And I love what Isaiah 1, 18, verse 19 says. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. 
Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And that was the crossroad of my life where God is speaking. And I believe God is speaking to somebody. He's asking you, come, let us reason together. Whatever situation you are in, you are struggling to make a decision. Whatever decision is, it is a crossroad of your life. Because every decision leads to a path. Amen. Whether the path is good or not, it's still a path. Amen. God is saying, come, let us reason together. And if there's somebody here, you don't know Christ and you're like me. You are a Catholic or you have some form of knowledge of God. Because you grew up going to Sunday church, but you have no commitment to Christ. God is saying to you today, come and let us reason together. Let us reason together. Let's meet. Today is your day of appointment. We're going to talk so you can make a decision. Hallelujah. And I start speaking to this God. It took one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. I'm battling with this God. I'm telling God how you are so God, but you're putting me in such a bad position. Hallelujah. I knew God was God regardless. I knew I had no say. And I start reasoning with God. I say, God, I will follow you not because I want to, but because I'm stuck. God is saying, let's reason. Let's reason together. Bring your thoughts. I'm going to bring mine. Bring your point of view. I'm going to bring mine. Because God is not after us following him like, like bull, bulls. We don't know where we're going. God wants to talk with you. He wants to reason with you to every decision of your life. Because he understands that every step you take, it leads you to a path. Either a path of life or a path of destruction. Amen. God is a God who wants to meet by appointment to every one of his people. God said he has given us a choice. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me today? I reasoned with God. It took weeks. I was in pain. I was crying because I couldn't see my way out. And I said, God, I will follow you, but don't ask me, don't ask me to change, God. I'll follow you, but don't ask me to be something I'm not. I'll follow you, but I don't want to serve you, God. I know you're God, but I'm not willing to give up my independence, my joy, my pleasures of sin to do what I want to do. I will serve you because you are God, but there are certain things I'm not willing to let go. Am I talking to somebody today? Is there things you are not willing to let go today? God said, come and let us reason together. Whatever it is, let us reason together. Amen? And uh, finally, I made a decision. I said, God, you know what? Uh, I don't have a choice. I need to stay with this man. I like him. He's smart. And the only way I can stay with him is because he's on fire all the way. I can't get him back. Amen? Hallelujah. So I remember at that whole point, we were going to church every Sunday. How many people come to church, but they haven't met with Jesus? They have a form of God in them, but they do not know what it is to serve and follow God. Sometimes we come to God and we have an emotional attachment to him, but we have not made a commitment and a decision to step into his lordship. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today we're going to give ourselves an opportunity because today is another day at the crossroad of your life. Are you going to make a decision? God is saying, let us reason together. Hallelujah. I'm the Lord your God. So I was going to church because I was enjoying the, enjoying the fellowship. It was a small African church led by a Zimbabwean pastor, woman. And she was preaching. It was fun because after it was fun, we just hang out. So I was coming. I, I used to tell God, I said, I know you're God. I have no question about it. I know you are the savior of the world. I cannot deny that. I grew up hearing that. I went to church hearing that. I had Sunday school hearing that. I had religion class hearing that. That Jesus, you had died for me. I have no question about that, God. And I know that I know you are the savior of the Lord. Because when I needed the visas to come to you, I came and I prayed to you. And you gave me the visa. Hallelujah. So I knew of this God. I had some form of knowledge. But I had not met him properly. I had not made a decision to stand 
in the ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this pastor, Zimbabwean woman, one day she calls me. And at that point, I had made my decision in my heart. You know, when somebody is ready to be born again, it doesn't matter how you present the gospel. <laughs> so she called and she said, I would like to talk to you. I said, of course. And she's like, your friend Giselle got born again. I said, praise God. I don't know what I said. And she said, do you want to go in hell by yourself? I said, no. I don't want to go to hell by myself. It will work, amen? Because you don't know what God is working in somebody's heart. And I said, no, I don't want to go to hell by myself. And he said, do you want to give your life to Jesus? And I said, yes, I'm going to leave, give my life to Jesus. And I prayed the prayer of salvation. And I said, God, I'm just, I'm letting go and I'm giving you my life. Because you see me, I don't make a decision because by nature I'm very loyal. So when I say something, I'm going to follow it through. So it took me weeks to follow it through. And finally, I surrendered my life to Christ. Amen. And I remember, and there was nothing powerful about it. I remember I was wearing just, okay, I'm going to be graphic. I remember I was wearing just a jean. I was tiny, cute, and a top. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, I just, I just gave my life to Christ. That's all I said. And that was it. I went to bed. And I remember that night, the Lord visited me. And then in the visitation of God, I saw the prophet Moses. We were by the river of water. He came and he spoke to me. And he said, the Lord is pleased with you. Hallelujah. The Lord is pleased with you. And I woke up and I say, my goodness, I don't even know what that means. Amen. But the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 to 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with a, with a heart, one's believe into righteousness. Hallelujah. And with a mouth, confession is made into salvation. He said, with the heart, you believe into righteousness. The minute you believe unto the Lord Jesus, righteousness is being imputed to you. It has nothing to do with whatever you've done, where you are, and where you're going. God said, the condition to be made right with God, it is to believe in your heart that Jesus is the Lord of our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not a walk of perfection. It's a walk of faith. For God appeared to Abraham. He said, do you believe I'm going to do this, this for you? And the, the Bible said Abraham believed. And it says it was imputed to him as righteousness because he believed. Today we have believers in this house. Today we have believers in this house. Don't look at your shortcoming and think because I'm in a shortcoming, I am not in right standing with God. God said, if you believe unto me, you believe every word I say, I, I call you righteous. Talk to your neighbor, say, I'm righteous. I might not look like righteous, but I'm righteous. I might not feel righteous today, but I, I am righteous. I am righteous by the blood of Jesus, not on my works. It is the grace of God. When God touches you and you believe every word he says about him, he says you are made right with him. You have full access into the presence of God. But you see, I didn't know all this stuff. And for years and days, I wonder, God, am I saved enough? Am I really saved? Because nothing inside me felt saved. I still wanted to do certain things that I used to do. Hallelujah. Am I talking to some people in this place who still look like the devil and believe like a Christian? Am I talking to some people who talks like the devil but believe that they are Christian? They believe in this God, but they still mess up every day. God said he has made you righteous regardless of how you look like, regardless of what you have made. As long as you believe in your heart, righteousness is imputed to you. Jesus, the devil is the liar. My righteousness does not come because I live a life free of sin. 
My life righteousness does not come because I live a life full of struggle. My righteousness comes because I believe unto the Lord Jesus as the Savior of my life. Do you believe today? Today receive the gift of righteousness, the gift of free, no condemnation, because God has made you worthy. By his blood, he has cleansed you. Amen. Receive the gift of no condemnation today, because God, when he looks up to you, he sees the righteousness of Christ. He sees the blood of Jesus covering you, cleansing you every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody today? Jesus, the Bible says that it is impossible to please God. God was pleased with me because I believed. For him who comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who trust in him. That's it. God said faith pleases him. It's not how you walk. It's not how you talk. It's your trust and believe in him. Today, I want you to be free. Free. Free the lie of the enemy. Telling you you're not good enough. You don't look like this one. You don't praise like this one. You don't like things like this one. God says, you believe in me? Believe into my son, you are saved. And I am in the job of cleansing you to make you holy. Because I have appointed you, set you aside, ordained you to walk holy before me. Hallelujah. For sanctification is a process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It does not give you permission to sin though. Hallelujah. So I started a walk with this God. Here I am, I'm lost as a young Christian girl, looking at these two big people passionate about preaching the gospel. And there's nothing about me passionate about preaching the gospel. And I feel so little and so small. I feel like I'm not Christian enough like them. I'm not powerful enough like them. I don't have enough faith like them. Then God in his mercy comes and says, I am so pleased with you. Because your walk with God is a personal walk. It's, an, it's not a walk where you have to compare yourself to somebody else. Hallelujah. For the way he deals with me is not the way he's going to deal with you. Because he knows what he has put inside of you. Say, I'm free. I'm free to be me. I'm free to live like Christ. In my own ways in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here I am every day, I'm looking at these two giants of the faith, telling me how they're going to change the world. And I'm sitting there, I'm so lost, I'm learning English. And then three months after, I get pregnant. Oh, and I speak of this with all the blessing of my daughter. She gave me permission to talk about it. I get pregnant. And then I find myself to another crossroad of my life. And I say to myself, I don't feel good. I know I must be pregnant. So he becomes on fire for Christ. He goes away for, a, for two weeks in December. He comes back, he falls into sin. And I get pregnant. And then at night I say, when I go to the doctor and I find out that I'm pregnant, I'm going to have an abortion. Because here I am, a 21-year young girl with dreams and expectations from her family to go to school, to succeed because they've worked hard to send me here. And I find myself pregnant. And I'm scared and overwhelmed. And I know nothing about having babies. And I say to myself, there's no way on this planet I can have this baby. Another crossroad of my life. And I said to myself, I took an appointment. I said, when I found out I'm pregnant, I'm going to go have an abortion. There was no other question in my mind. And I said, that's what I'm going to do. And I remember at night, I had another visitation of the Lord. Another crossroad of my life. Every day is a crossroad of your life. Every day is a choice you must make to do God's way on your way. 
And every day we, we get through periods where we are overwhelmed. And we take decision based on what we are going through. On what be, rather than what, what God says. Hallelujah. So just remember, this is not Pastor Nadia of 20 years after. This is young little me who just found Christ, who is so confused about everything about her life. And I remember at night, God visited me again. And he, and he showed me it was a vision. I was walking on a path just like that path. And I'm walking, and all I remember, I was walking with all the Old Testament prophets. Don't ask me how I knew them. I just knew them. I saw myself walking with prophet Isaiah, prophet Jeremiah, prophet Elijah. I saw myself with prophet Moses. And we are walking, and as we get at the crossroad where I have to make a decision, I hear the voice of God speaking to me. He said... You have two choices. This is a short way, but the end is bad. This is a long way. It's going to be long and very hard, but the end is good. And I heard God speak to me and say, choose. And in a dream, I said, of course, who's stupid enough to take a short way that leads to distraction? And I chose the, the, the long way, and I find myself walking with the old prophets of old. And that was a crossroad for me. But that dream didn't make sense until I went to the doctor. I go to the doctor and then she tells me, you're pregnant. And I say, okay, I need the pregnancy abortion center. I need the card. And then she said, okay, the secretary will give it to you. And she came, the secretary gave it to me. I held it. And as I was waiting for my boyfriend then, the dream came back to life to me. And I understood God was telling me, if you have an abortion, this is a short way. It seems right to you, but the end is bad. But if you take the wrong way, it's going to be hard. But the end is good. And I thank God. I thank God because my spirit had already responded to the yes of God. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 13, 14, no, in Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you may live. Today you are on the crossroad of your life. I don't know what decision you must make. But today said, I call heaven as a witness. Today, choose life. Or choose death. It's still a choice. God will not come and push you. It's still a choice for you. Who are you going to follow? Which choice are you going to decide? You are at the crossroad of your life. Where are you going? Are you going to the narrow way that brings to life? Hallelujah. Like the Bible says in Matthew, enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide. And the way is easy that leads to distraction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Today we have few in this place who will find the narrow gate that leads to life. Amen? Am I talking to somebody today? Woody Allen said something. He said, we stand at a crossroads. One path leads to despair, the other to destruction. Let's hope we make the right choice. When it comes to God and our walk with Christ, today let's make sure we make the right choice. Hallelujah. We make the right choice in our walk with Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible is very clear. It says choose life or choose death. Amen. Hebrew 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, I was surrounded in my vision. I had no clue what it was. They were cheering me on, telling me, take the way where we took. Amen. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the rest that is set before us. 
The Bible says we need to ride with endurance because it's a hard way that leads to life. Amen. For who? That leads, no, let us run with endurance. The race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before us, before him, he endured the cross. Despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Today there is a cloud of witness. The cloud of witness is all the Hebrew 11 prophets, men and women who chose the hard way. They are standing by you saying, let's do this together. This walk of Christ is a walk that is worth it. Choose life. Do not choose short. Do not choose easy. Do not choose wide. But choose life. Choose narrow. That leads to life. Today, everyone is on a crossroad. You are on a crossroad of your life. Every decision you make every day. God is giving you a choice. You have a choice to choose life or to choose death. Hallelujah. I chose life and I chose God and I chose my baby. Hallelujah. I thank God and thank God. I thank God. <clears throat> was it hard? It was extremely hard. It took me five months to tell my parents. It was hard. Every day I'm talking to myself. You just mess up your life. You just destroy your life. You see, me, emotions will talk to you. But God says, still choose life. Still choose the choice of God. Even if at that moment you're suffering, you're struggling, uh, everything about you tells you to go the other way. God says, choose life. God says, it's going to be hard. It's going to be long. But the end is good. My daughter just celebrated 21 years old, 21 years old, and I thank God. And it was at 21 I got pregnant with her, and this year has been very monumental for me because God liberated me from that guilt. Hallelujah. When you look at your daughter and every day, you say, how can I have thought about it? But I'm so thankful to God because she forgave me. And she said, Mommy, today talk about it. Talk about it, how it felt for you. It's your story. It's going to help somebody. It's your story. When you grow up seeing your daughter feeling rejected because she was rejected in the womb. Because when you're young and desperate, you have no idea what you're doing. And every day I'm crying. I feel like my life is over. I'm so lonely. And I'm telling my daughter, you came to destroy my life. Yes, God said it was going to be hard and long. But the end was good. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Faithful in all his ways. Every time you make a bad decision, a good decision for God, God will stand by you. I can never forget when God spoke to me. When my daughter was two, she's going to bring you happiness and joy. This story of yours. God said, I have put chains of righteousness on her. She will never depart from me. Say, God, the fruit of my suffering. Has become my joy. Yeah. She said, Mom, I just believe your story should be in the Bible. Because <laughs> you are one of those, you are like prophets, Moses, man, you are obedience to God. She's my comfort and my joy. So today, I don't know what choice, I feel like I need to end here, we'll continue, amen. I don't know what choice you have to make. I don't know at what crossroad of your life you are at. Today, God is extending this invitation to you. And one thing I've learned 
In life, never make a decision when you are suffering, when you are overwhelmed and stressed out. Never make a permanent decision in your life. Sit and wait on God. I don't know where you need to stand today when it comes to your walk with God. Are you living a life of lukewarmness or are you willing to go through the narrow gate that is hard but that leads to life? Today, as I was talking to my daughter, she said, Mommy, have you ever wondered what would have happened if you have taken the short way of abortion? I said, I don't want to know, baby. And today, I want to tell you, you don't want to know when you take the wrong way. Today, let's choose the right path. Today, let's choose to go fully for Christ. I have made up my mind. I will not turn back. Hallelujah. You say goodbye to the ways of this world. Goodbye to the thinking of this world. Today, do not make decisions based on your feeling, your hurt, and your emotions. Let the word of God lead you. It is the wisdom of God. Let him guide you and lead you into his place, the place of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said the pleasures of sin are for a moment. Today we're going to stand up in the presence of God to be continued. Amen. I just spoke about three months of my life since I came to Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the same God who visited me and led me is the same God who wants to lead you and visit you. Today he says he wants you to choose. But he wants you to choose wisely. He wants that this is decision we make every day. Are decisions that are honored by God. Today, I want you to put an end to walk, walk, look warmness. Today, I want to challenge you not to make decisions out of fear. But make decisions based on the word of God. Today I want the source of life, which is the source of wisdom, Christ himself. Be the guidance of your life. Today I want you to say no more to the ways of the world. Today I want you to step into faith. Say God I believe, I believe. And because I believe I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk the path. Today I want to make a decision to choose well. Because you see destiny is at stake. Today I want you to turn to your left and to your right. Talk to your neighbor say, I choose life. I choose life. I choose Christ. I choose his ways. I choose the narrow gate. I choose hard way. I choose God's way. For his grace is always available to those who are willing. He says if you are willing and you are obedient, you will eat the good of the land. He said let me walk with you on this journey of life. Let me hold you by your hand and let's reason as we walk this journey. Let my grace that is available empower you to do my will. Today I want we make a commitment again. Commitment to living well. Commitment to choosing well. Today, I want you to say, God, I'm loyal to your word. I'm loyal to your ways, God. 
And if it costs me, like Manzi said, let me swear by my own hurt. Because God honors those who fear him. And who in the midst of challenges still to choose to do it God's way. Today I want you to hold the hands of your neighbor. Today we're going to make a commitment again to Christ. Commitment to living right. I want you to repeat after me, Father God. I thank you for today. For today is at a crossroad of my life again. Father God, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died and rose again. Today, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you for the gift of righteousness today. Today, I choose to live right. I choose to live well. And I choose to live but for your glory. God, today I step out of fear. And I step into faith. I welcome the wisdom of God today. Let the revelation of your word give me light today, God. Let every darkness in my life flee, God. That I may walk blameless before you. I want to live by your precept. I want to walk with you like Enoch walked with God. I want to walk with you like Abraham walked with you. On this journey of the narrow road, I want to find life and life in you only. So I welcome your wisdom in my life. I welcome your knowledge in my life. I welcome your word of wisdom in my life. Lead me and guide me by your spirit. I thank you God. Because today you are pleased with me. Because I choose to believe your way is the way of life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we give a clap offering to the Lord? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up here. Hallelujah. This is my story. Hallelujah. This is my story. I'm praising my Savior because He found me when I was like, wasn't looking for Him. And I know He found you when you were not looking for Him. And grace found you and grace met you. Grace has sustained you this far. And grace will keep leading.